Friday. Do you know where your IT pros are? We don't. It's Patch and Switch. And now, two guys who couldn't make it as billboard installers, but boy, could they configure install shield. It's Patch and Switch. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you're bringing back memories, man. Memories. Install shield. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. I like, hey, um, you, your last comment in chat, you may want to take a look at that. Just, just saying. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the big program on uh, this, a uh, bank holiday weekend, a holiday Friday. We we have a holiday coming, and I'm actually, do you mind, can, can I just, I'm just going to, yeah. <laughs> you can remove that. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to actually ask one of our mods to to, to yes. remove that. If, nice. If, if you wouldn't mind there, mod. Um, oh, what a way to start. Uh, you know what, I'm glad that's not the uh, core team meeting for... Uh, Microsoft Ignite with 185 people inside of it, and I would say something like that in the chat. That would not be good. <laughs> no, <laughs> that would be a very it, quick, uh, very quick double up arrow to edit that if that was the case. Yeah. Though, though instead, what you do is you actually go in and you do it in the live stream to <laughs> hundreds of, yeah, uh -huh. hundreds of followers. Oh yes. my goodness. Yeah. Uh huh. So okay. I'm gonna have a drink of coffee. You can start the introductions. I'll be right with you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. So, hey, it, like I said, it's a bank holiday Friday. So, so, so the chat room is a little light now. So, call all your friends, send text messages, IMs, however, and tell them that the show's on. Um, and, uh, <laughs> chat has just gone completely out of control. Uh, so, we're gonna say hello to ninety eight codes. Uh, big hello to Absa Blog and Lutley, Aspen Forster, uh, Darkle Gas, Darkle Gas, Dark 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 Legacy. Oh my gosh, read, read, uh, DEF CON veteran, uh, Exchange SME, the foulest of tempers in the PDX, H. Hazley, uh, K. McFerrin, uh, Kowski in the house, KT Baker in the house, the shadiest of pandas, the madam of SharePoints, uh, Sigo360, welcome to the big program. Uh, Soren is here, uh, hopefully um, now moving past the uh, uh, potential divorce proceedings of last year. Uh, Vizio MVP and Visual Studio, Nice. Visual Studio in the house. Wow. Uh, That's in nice. the program. And I do want to do a shout uh, out to SharePoint Madam, who claims that the three day weekend is otherwise known as SharePoint patching days uh, to be able to have enough time to allow patches to fully settle on SharePoint farms. Oh, okay. Um, big hello to 87 that. Izzy, uh, who started her frozen playlist this morning, and Chase Thomas Mauer right out of the room. Yes, um, very and nice. Hello to Colleen. Uh, who should be doing something. And I see Lurks is in the house, as is Patrick. So people are getting the memos. Nice. People are getting oh. the messages that you're sending out as people keep coming in. Yeah, keep uh, it up. I see JFlow also in the house and the Wired of Canucks versus the Wireless Canuck. Totally yeah. different person. Uh, Kodiak, Kodiak Brute. Uh, we'll just call him Kodiak. I, and, I just we've, we've lost some of our friends who are uh, back to school this week, at least here in the Washington side of things. I know that we don't have... Um, what was it, uh, Mr. TJ12, not Mr. TJ11? Um, he's actually back in school probably, so. Ah. That's why he's not yeah. here. It's because it's five minutes past when school time starts. So kids, if you're watching this, make sure you go back to paying attention to the other screen where yes. uh, you're getting your daily school inputs. Yeah, please please do not uh, multitask uh, with your, your, your <laughs> M365 for classrooms or your Teams for classrooms meetings and the patch and switch program. So, yeah, not good. Yeah. yeah now, if you're thanks. working and you're looking after a Sev one or a Sev two, no problem. You can have us open just as a distraction. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, <laughs> heck, I was preparing for the show dealing with a Sev one issue in the house today. What? Uh, what? A Sev one in the house? Was your internet down or something yeah. like that? Uh, no, the M three sixty five for home uh, subscription had expired. <laughs> <laughs> did Did your friendly uh, friendly um, Neighborhood uh, Lar contact you to try to renew your no. EA agreement? Um, no. Or no. did you have no. to go through what some happened? kind of a, a true up exercise? So, so what happened is uh, the way that I found out about it was the sound of dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Dad. That's how I found out about it. Nice. 
Nice. Yep. I, yep. I had my I had my hands full as I was uh, in barista mode making coffee for the house um, with our espresso machine. So I, I literally have like orders that I have to get done in a certain amount of time, and I, I'm clocked for how fast I can do them. And if I get them right, and some of them are fancy, and some of them are regular. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, mine is always at the end. So the barista window has closed. Um, do you deliver? Uh, no, no, I don't have what about, a. What'd you say? Do you have, do you have the dad dash service set up where you can tell your kids to bring the food over to me? No, actually, um, it's more likely a mom dash. I think. Um, uh, I want to do a shout okay. out to the moms who do a crap ton uh, out yeah. there, and the dads do a crap ton out there too. I mean, we're all working multiple jobs. All I want to say is uh, I need to have someone endorse me on LinkedIn for my barista skills and also okay. for tech support skills. If you get a chance, please, that'd be helpful. Uh, I'll definitely get you for your barista skills because I've actually uh, I've actually had a you've made me quite quite the nice Americano actually mm. this is obviously way back uh, the start of the year before when, social distancing when we could actually be in the same room together yes um, exactly and 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 you know Wired Canuck is asking absolutely um, uh, I, for some reason uh, when I'm delivering my coffee to my wife Kelly I'll say her name as Chloe or I'll say her name as Sure. as Sarah or as Susan, yes. just because you yes. have to keep up the, the illusion that we yes. are still in the regular world with badly pronounced names by baristas. Yep, yep. the barista forgets the or, yeah the completely wrong name they wrote, but the order is the same, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, big shout out to Patrick in the house who's in between jobs oh. because he's starting a new gig as a cloud specialist, Ooh. a Microsoft cloud specialist. So uh, congratulations. big congratulations, and he gets yeah. a six week break too. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, what are you going to do, Patrick? <laughs> Watch this show, probably. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you know what he could do is he could actually queue up all the back episodes of Patch and Switch because they were released last week. So they we were. are up to date. Yes, episode number 54, I think, is the current one on yeah. the Patch and Switch podcast available on yeah. various directories close to you, like Apple Podcast, iTunes, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Breaker. We're on Breaker now. Um, like you name what's it, it's there. Huh? I didn't even know that there was another service. No, no, is, is there Break? What's what's the one that DJ Joey Snow uses for That his... could be Spreaker. Spreak, Spreaker? Spreak, Spreaker? Spreaker. It's like Speaker with an R, Spreaker. Spre Sp Specker. Spre Spreaker. That, yeah, we're on Spreaker too, I think. It's, it's so our, like, I can't hear you, uh, man. I, well, I, I don't have any in-ear monitors. I gotta get some in-ear monitors. I'm uh, getting old. Okay. Uh, you, Phil, Phil Schaub will ask, barista skill, starting a new career? No, no, this is just an addition. This is current COVID right. lockdown, secondary skilling, uh, yes, I guess is what we should call it. The so. forced the forced side hustle is what it is. Forced, forced side hustle. Side hustle. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, and, you know, obviously tagged in there are the brewmaster because my beer is getting low in the kegerator. So I've got to make sure I've yep. got to keep eggs full at all times. Uh, yep. I'm due for some uh, weekend beer maintenance as well for doing some tap line cleaning. So that'll be Ooh. involved. Uh, yeah. And I do believe my kids want to go off because it's a long weekend and uh, have me teach them four wheeling um, as a adventure tour guide as well. Oh, wow. Look so at Rickster that. Adventure. CDN's yeah. adventure Jeep tours in the Pacific Northwest coming soon to an online service near you. <laughs> hey, did you know the Patch and Switch has started up a consultancy? I heard a rumor about that. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, we have we have officially set up a consultancy program. Uh, in this, we are producing uh, unofficial end user guides. Uh, I think the it's end a user guide to Microsoft Ignite. Yes. Um, where we talked that registration was open and why it's important to register. If you want further information and more end user guides, we actually published another video this morning. We haven't really made a big deal out of it because we did have the show today, but you head on over to aka.m slash patch and switch, which would normally redirect you to our homepage, redirects you to this end user guide. Um, and yes, you will be able to catch uh, the first episode, which is about registration. And second episode, I believe uh, that was on digital breakout sessions. Yes. Uh, the second, second episode, chapter? yes, is on digital breakouts. What the heck are digital breakouts? Um, and uh, hmm. we've lost audio. Seems to say that we're out of audio. They can't hear our audio right now. 
Okay, no problem. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, audio Guy. That's all good. Uh, so, so we're going to rewind. When did we lose audio? Did we lose audio before I started uh, talking about the new consultancy? Could possibly. I, let's, let's just make, let's be sure and go ahead and talk about that a bit. There we go. So the consultancy and talking this about this is the just chapter. like what happened yesterday. I know it's eh? exactly what happened yesterday. I know. <laughs> uh, um, okay, <laughs> DevCon veteran, I can't afford to register for Microsoft Ignite. Uh, you can; it's free. It, hey, but listen, I mention it's free. Yeah, it is free. Uh, we have set up a consultancy. Patch and Switch officially has a consultancy now. Uh, we are producing end user guides. Yes, unofficial end user guides, and the yes. first one that we have produced uh, is the end user guide uh, to uh, Microsoft Ignite. And unofficial end user guide to Microsoft Ignite. Head on over to aka.ms/patch-and-switch. Um, okay, so just after, so there we go. All right, so you, you, you know you've seen it, uh, view it. Uh, as always, you can catch all the videos on all of our social channels. We are at Patch and Switch on everything except for TikTok. That is correct. No, is no TikTok. No, no. no. sorry, is he? No. no. Um, uh, we're also available to do contract work for additional end user guides. I do believe someone's asking us to do an end user guide for how to use and work with OBS, starring okay. uh, Steve, the audio guy, and Wired Canuck. Okay. Uh, both yep. of those two gentlemen are phenomenal producers uh, for various different pieces of content. So hats off, but I won't take my hat off uh, to, to them <laughs> for <laughs> all the effort and work Here, that they I'll, do. I'll, I'll take mine off. There you go. Hats off to you folks. Um, and some wise, some reason, I think I also need to go off and, and become my side hustle gig of an optometrist, or at least a glasses fixer person. Because yesterday during a meeting, as I'm playing with my glasses, um, <laughs> my, my arm fell off and it doesn't work anymore. So I'm looking on the floor, which is carpeted, to find the tiniest of screws to be able to, to get this back on there. I'm I'm considering using a garbage twist tie to be able to hold it because it's a pain in the butt to not have glasses. Uh, so yeah. Um, so if you see me in a meeting later today, Joey, uh, with um, sunglasses on, I'm not sleeping. It's because those are my prescriptions for uh, for distance. Uh, Absa Absa Blog Lutely says it was interesting to see they were asking about social interaction options during registration for uh, Microsoft Ignite. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We might have a video about that coming coming very, mm. very soon. Uh, yes. Video MVP contract work. Joey is a hitman. Uh, we didn't say that, but we haven't rolled it out either. Yes. Uh, 80, no, no, Izzy, we're not starting the show from the beginning. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, should we start the big program? We've done all, we've done all the promotion. Um, shall, we start the, shall we start the big chew? Absolutely. I think the big show, the main part, the main uh, sections, which is known as From the Trenches, the work that we've yes. been doing for our day jobs. Uh, mm. We do have day jobs still um, that actually relate in some way to IT. Uh, what, uh, what's been keeping you busy the last couple of weeks there, buddy? Oh, I see. Ozbob has joined us. So hi, Ozbob. Hey. Uh, what has been keeping me busy? I have just come back from a two-week holiday. Okay, so you're not doing any work then. You're simply processing email and answering and declining meeting requests that happened two months ago. Yes, pretty much. Uh, okay, the good. inbox. I, I did do some inbox triage the night before I came back just to make sure that there was nothing, you know, absolutely tier one. Was, seven, was that, zero, was that zero. after your second or third uh, vodka with two limes and soda? Well, I, I didn't. I, I didn't. Look, you process email, you process email. Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, so I've, I'm I'm getting back into the swing of things, and boy, have I been in a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, apparently, a lot of people are like, "Yeah, we've been waiting for you to get back, so we have this thing for you." Stacked uh, up all these meetings. Yes, absolutely, and of course, the week that I come back is the week that we open registration for Microsoft Ignite. So there's yeah. well, there's quite a bit of stuff going on there. Yeah, I see. I see that you're finally now attending the uh, writer's room meetings for Microsoft Ignite. So I'm glad you finally uh, made time to join those. I cannot confirm nor deny the existence of said meeting and whether I <laughs> attend or not. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Um, so, 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 yeah, it's that, it's that post-holiday, um, post post-vacation email bankruptcy, 
bank bankruptcy that I have claimed. And so now everybody's kind of just jumping back in and, and asking, should, you know, following up with with some things. I think we should probably welcome back most of our European audience as well, because they're all coming off of their two month vacation that they normally take in the summer times uh, yes. to come back to work now. So I'm pretty yes. sure that our friends over on the other side of the pond are um, set all email forward to trash bin or sorry, rubbish bin uh, to be able to uh, to uh, handle the email load uh, at different times. So Phil in the chat room, uh, Phil says, uh, here's a question during Corona. It seems the meetings have multiplied. Does anyone else feel that way? Uh, um, I would say potentially, but I think that's died down for me. I've been pretty militant with um, deny, deny, deny for meetings. Unless, like, I used to get lots of meetings where people would simply give you, like, the one-line sentence for what it is and the subject line and a blank thing. So I have a yeah. I have a personal rule that if the description is blank inside of the actual thing, um, I just decline. Sorry, it's if it's not important enough to tell me what's inside the meeting, or if the meeting yeah. could be handled by email, uh, it goes right into my trash bin with a deny. You haven't gotten there yet. Uh, I have a lot of meetings about meetings to produce something for a meeting, oh, and okay. um, the yeah the, pre, the pre planning meeting of the meeting to talk about what you're going to be doing in the meeting. Yes, absolutely. Which all could be handled through email, but is being done on text yeah. message. I, I yeah, think, I don't know. It's I, I think yeah. honestly, it's just a matter of, and this is not unique to Microsoft. I think it's a matter of folks. Again, they're just adjusting, and they feel yep. the need to have meetings to show that they're doing stuff. Um, I, so one thing I've done is I stack a lot of my meetings that I have with my team all to be on Tuesdays. So Tuesdays is is a long day for me. I start at. Uh, yep. Sometimes six o'clock in the morning, I go till seven, eight o'clock at night. Uh, but then that leaves me Wednesdays and Thursdays and sometimes Fridays where I can basically schedule the rest of my week for the work that I need to get done. So I try to stack my meetings that I know that are reoccurring and important on the Tuesdays. Um, Wednesdays I reserve for my one-on-one -on -one with my boss because um, uh, he gets, <laughs> I don't want to miss that one. He's, he's yeah. my, my boss, in case you don't know, is Donovan Brown. And uh, the, oh, yeah. the, the, the ex lead of the, uh, the league, um, if you show up and you're not in the meeting exactly when it's supposed to start at eight o'clock, if that's the case when it is, um, he gets, he's sitting there with his drumming his fingers on his desk. It's, and then it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so I'll be in a meeting someplace else. And sometimes meetings go long and I'm like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, see ya, see ya, click. And I jump Boss. in the meeting. Click. Yeah. yeah. Uh, H. Yeah. Hazley asking, uh, there's a decline button. Uh, <laughs> Phil says, I'm starting my day at 6 a.m. now to have two and a half hours before the first meeting. I'm I'm right there with you. I actually do wake up very early to have an hour and a half before my first meeting. And it is extremely early. Uh, Absa blog, literally, I've had less meetings, but had have way more Teams chats. My yeah. analytics shows that a lot. there's a lot of ad hoc calls. Yep, 100% there. Ad hoc uh, calls. Casey Baker, chats. your boss gets upset when you deny the required staff meeting. Yeah. Um, Jay Shock's team has a no meeting Tuesday because it used to be no meeting Friday before COVID. I have no meeting Wednesday, oh, yeah. which has done nothing but make Tuesday and Thursday absolute hell and <laughs> has given me absolute <laughs> zero work time because... They stack it on both sides. Well, yeah, but no meeting Wednesday um, means that all my internal stuff is Tuesday and Thursday. So the only time I really have like free for, for, for a good day of partner meetings is Wednesday. Yeah. And, and so it just it does because it, it was supposed to be for work time and focus time. But we're, we're partner facing in my role. So that's been a little bit of an adjustment there. We're working. To your nice. point, Madam, the more meetings I have, the less work I get done. And I am right there with you yesterday. Uh, I believe was back to back to back to back. I had 30 minutes at 1230, which actually I think we ended up on a call talking about some other things yeah. at, at that point in time. Um, so that that was a little bit uh, wild and crazy. Kowski, um, I have less because they don't walk past my door. See, I miss that. Yeah. Am I the only one who misses the ad hoc? Like Because like there's well, a that, lot of things that can get done when you get those random that's, drive bys right that, that's that's where the that's where the chat comes in now right my drive bys are my chat windows all of a sudden people will, will pop in and say something and hopefully yeah. they actually say something as opposed to just hi and then it just sits there with nothing else in it it's like so you or you got a minute for a question moment? and then they don't ask the question like just give me the full details in the chat please Do, have you seen this new movement this this no hi movement no, no hello. Hi. that's right no hello no hello? What? Yeah. 
So, so there's a, hey, Jared, do you have the page? Why don't, why don't you, uh, uh, Steve, the audio guy, show that in, in chat, because um, not only do we have audio, but we actually can do video. Uh, there is actually a, a no hello uh, movement happening here, which is basically like, hey, if you're going to start an IM with hello and not give me any other information, don't expect me to respond. Yeah, true. Very true. Uh, well. So, yeah. So that's, yeah. Uh, so a bunch of people are actually talking about it. I love no hello from Aspen. Um, no hello.com acts apps a blog and lootly. Um, so, so you know what's so hilarious yeah. is that is that I got a I got an email from a guy after he after did he something did something and tried to jump, jump into my chat for, for, for a drive by, drive by. And, and his, his email, email says, says you no know, you know I support, I support no, hello, no hello and, hello, and, and, and had the link to and stuff like that and what did he do for his chat hello 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 I'm like I'm like yeah dude dude. Come on, yeah, on. yeah. I'm assuming, I'm assuming yeah. like, this, this, this is where, this is I, where I need to actually, actually brush off some of my very, very, very rusty coding, skills. coding skills. I do have I do some have coding, coding skills. skills. I don't tell I don't people, people that a lot. That, a lot. Um, um, that, that uh, I should go, I should in, go in and program some kind of auto bot responder for my, for my own, own account. account. Basically, basically yeah. 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 it's a one liner, one liner, and it's it's only it's only a couple of words like hi or hello or can you talk. Then it will go in and auto reply them. I need to do something like that. So it's so it's it's interesting because. Um, um, I kind of I have, kind of like, have the like the order, order of what is what is important if I really, if I really need, need to get, to get in, touch in touch with you. With you. And, so, and so, so if it's like, like really, really low priority, priority it's, like it's like an email. And then, and then if, if it's like, like kind of important, important, I might do like a Teams chat. And then if it's a little bit more important than that, I'll shoot you a text. And if it's really important I talk to you, then I actually call you. Yeah, and that's I know, just I know when I, when when your when your contact details show up on my phone, that's a sev one. That's a crit sit sev zero actually. Because <laughs> I rarely call. <laughs> rarely, rarely call. You know. Yeah. Echo, echo, echo. Hello. Hello. They're they're working on it. They're working on okay. it. What? Right. what? 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 Huh? Huh? Okay, we'll figure this out. <laughs> We'll figure this out. Fire, fire, fire. Audio, audio, audio. Guy, nice. guy, guy. <laughs> um, this is where we just fill with some with some pleasantries and and uh, jokes until it comes back again. There we go. Fixed. Better. Okay. So my work. <laughs> I week, love our chat. I love I know, our chat because they our just chat is tech they... support. It's it's. This is what happens when you have 30, 40 people that are all from check tech support helping you out to make the Twitch stream even better all the time. And so, big no, shout no, out. No, they're not helping. Now, <laughs> if you look, if you see this, they're going umbrella, Ella, Ella. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Echo. I, I love this. I just, I love all of it. I, I love all of it. So uh, uh, for, for me, for my, for my work week, um, uh, I actually got off my butt and finally decided to get off, uh, get off my butt and write a blog post. It's been a while since I've written a blog post and, and a technical uh -huh. nature. And so uh, I went ahead and I wrote a blog post specifically around how to upload a custom image into Azure to be able to use as an image for deployment uh, and what you'd have to do because I found out doing my research for something else that it's, it hasn't been really streamlined as for the way that we document it. So I basically pulled the source from like three different documents on Microsoft Docs, uh, sorry, docs on Microsoft.com to be able to do it. But then I made the mistake of re relying on my previous knowledge, my previous history of working with images because I used to be on the team that sat next to the people that made images for Azure Marketplace. And at the time when I was over there, they did not have a core install of Windows Server. So a, a Windows Server image that was done with the server core interface. And so I, I, I made the absolute stellar mistake of not double checking with a one line of PowerShell or a one line of Azure CLI to list off all the images and then grep on the word core or something like that. And so I'm like, oh, well, I always found, you know, I went off of my storyteller mode. Oh, I remember when I was doing this and I needed to do this. And so I decided to make an image using server core install because you can do that now. And as soon as the post went live, I would say within five minutes, and it went live at like 2 a.m., within five minutes, uh, there was a post and a number of tweets and some commentary from my good friends, the MVPs inside of the European time zone. <laughs> Probably cracked me with screenshots of all the core images that have been inside of the marketplace <laughs> for quite some time, calling my bluff. Uh, so, um, you know, I want to say a big <clears throat> shout out to the MVP community. They are absolutely awesome for what they do. Uh, and they also hold us honest for being able to go off and do stuff. So I, I, I subsequently edited and updated the blog post to correct, the, to, to correct myself. 
But uh, the whole premise of the uh, blog post was talking about um, being able to go in and do uh, a custom image install because it is kind of a crappy experience if you're trying to research it. But yeah. then we got into a debate on when you would use a custom image versus using a marketplace image. Uh, and then I'm like, well, you know what? Here, here's my five bullet points for why you would use a built-in one and why you would use a custom one. And it really came down to preferences built in, if you can do the automation to configure that image in a fast enough time that meets your requirements, then go right. ahead and use that. Because whenever you deploy a new image, it will go in and get the latest bits from Microsoft from the image to be able to do it. So you have patches integrated with it. If you go in and make your own custom image, you obviously have to go in and update that. The the But sometimes, uh, I don't know if, if anyone in the chat room has come across this before, um, sometimes the antiquated software that has to be installed on that image uh, does not support automation or the automation takes too long uh, and uh, you need to have a faster way of doing it. So that's where a custom image comes into play once again. So yeah, it was a good uh, Phil, uh, version. Phil is recommending that you update the blog post so that you look like you are always correct. <laughs> um, I can't and, do that. And our good friend Absa Blog and Lutely has actually linked to the blog. Oh, nice. Uh, so Blog and Lutely has blogged about where to go get the blog. So yeah. there, we go. Um, there we go. So again, I've I've got a couple more blog posts lined up to go. It was actually good to exercise the brain and 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 go off and do that. Uh, I can't just rely on my team to be the awesome content creators that they are to go off and keep the blog fed. So I need a blog as well. So uh, yeah, I'm working on it. I'm getting there. That's uh, the second segment of the big program is, uh, is, is beer money, which is the support that we do for our friends, our family, our families, friends, pets, dogs, uncles, sisters. Uh, I covered earlier my uh, internal sub one outage today. Yes. Uh, due to letting my uh, whole, uh, my family uh, M365 account expire, which that does actually cause quite a few problems given the number of features that, that I'm currently um, uh, forcing uh, the family to use. <laughs> nice. uh, the other thing uh, that, that, so I, I'm wondering, is it, is, is it beer money support when I ask for your assistance with something? Absolutely. How can so, it not be? I mean, I charge, you, you can't afford my rates, Joey. So that's why you get the beer money <laughs> rates. Just to, just to let you know, I do actually have some serious tech credentials back in the day. Like, you know, I'm, I, I have over 167 Active Directory designs for large companies back in the old days <laughs> when I was a consultant. But anyway. Well, this is, this is not an Active Directory question. Okay, good. Uh, and by the way, hello to Mr. TJ12, not Mr. TJ11, who's not in school. Okay. Uh, apparently. <laughs> uh, so, as as you know, one of the things that in 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 having to produce a lot of videos recently, I have built a studio, and yes. we keep threatening to have a stream about this, and we will. I promise, we will. We just there's this whole ignite thing that's happened, and you all yeah, watch the videos. Kind of busy. Well. But at any rate, at, at any rate. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, Foul Temper says, Joey, so I believe you mean governance. Yes, you are correct, governance, <laughs> yes. Um, and so one of the things that I did is I actually, on your recommendation, got a prompter. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not because our show is scripted, because it's not. Definitely <laughs> not scripted. Uh, none right, of our videos that, are, I, are scripted. We would have to pay extra money for the quality of the prompting texts. There's no way they could come up with this that fast. That is absolutely correct. Uh, but so that we could use this as a way to project the image of whoever you're talking to on Teams onto the prompter. Now, I have ordered the monitor because I had to, of course, it's me. I can't just go off of the very first 10 inch monitor, you know, HDMI monitor link that pops up. I have to research everything, watch 400 YouTube videos, everything else. And I finally figured out the one I'm going to get. Now, the question I have for you is with Teams, how are you configuring to, to where like I can see your lovely mug here when I'm chatting with you, but like meeting information, like if you're sharing something or slides or chat on another screen? Because you, I heard you say the other day you're showing, you have it on three screens? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you know, great, great point. So, the prompters that we're using are basically just a mirror reflected glass that allows us to put the camera behind. So whatever you're projecting up onto that is obviously mirrored. It's not flipped, it's mirrored. So um, 
what I would do is when I launch teams is if it's a if if it's like just one person, it's easy. You just right mouse click on the person and then you say pin and that goes up there. If um, if it's a couple of people, you can pin a bunch of people and then you can also go and change the view and that's all fine. But that's just the meeting client. Um, if there's content that's being shared, what I would normally do is I would actually open up actually before we even get to the content, if there's chat going on, because there's normally always chat in meetings when there's more than one person, I don't want the chat up in my prompter because I can't see it. So what I'll do right. is I'll take the second uh, Teams client, the actual big Teams client, that's not the meeting itself, and I would change to the chat mode on that one there to be able to have the chat on one side that I could go off and respond to with the chats. But the trick is, if you need to have a third thing displayed Ooh. from Teams, is you go in and you open up Teams on the web, once you have it on the web, then you can go in and mute the audio of uh, the web browser, and then you can pin the shared content to that screen. So I now have my chat stream on one half of my 4K monitor, my stuff that's being shared in proper view pinned with the audio turned off on the browser on my other half of the monitor, and then I have the camera view that I wanna go off and see up here inside of my, my prompter area to be able to give me the ability to look at all of them. Now, that's the kind of the way that I'm in right now, and that seems to be the best way because I haven't found any other way to do it for being able to um, make that happen. The next trick I'll give you is, obviously, we use the Stream Deck as an extra add-on to our computers. If you don't yeah. know, there are key shortcuts inside of Teams that you can use to mute your microphone, turn off your camera, and uh, end the call and stuff like that. And if you press one of those buttons, you all of a sudden have the ability to go through and. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you press the button. Yeah. Am I back now? Okay, yeah, sorry, I, I, I hit the mute button as an example. At least I didn't show you with the end call version, because that would have been really kind of funny if whoop, all of a sudden Rick disappeared. No, you did that on the last show. It's okay. okay. <laughs> it's it's nice. okay. We've done this before. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and you just, you just, Steve just had a, a sheer panic right there because you, because <laughs> we, we all know that during the show, Steve doesn't actually watch the show. Mm. He's got 19 other windows doing other right. things, as no, you can probably tell. Steve yeah. is one of those guys that has 99 uh, browser tabs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Open any kind of time. You got it. All right. Yeah. Well, so, cool. so, that, so that's my optimal version, version of Teams. So that, that's how okay. I kind of end up doing that right now. All right. Well, that's. That's that's what that's what I'm that's where I'm going with with getting this new monitor. So right. obviously I've got some random spending to talk about later on in the show. So okay, all right, that works. I, I just I had no idea how you did it. Yeah. And I just thought, hey, let's talk about it. You know, like I've got to ask you, and this is about the only time I talk to you anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, another thing on the team side of things is uh, I've gone in and actually had a uh, teams. Uh, I want to say uh, crit sit. Seb Zero as well earlier in the week because you know all of us are playing tech support uh, for our families as they're doing mm -hmm. uh, now potentially back to school and remote learning, and uh, the the crit set that I had was my daughter because I don't work in the education space and there's an educational version of Teams configuration that's more locked mm -hmm. down and controlled, and I've never played with it before so I got to play with it for the first time getting my kids set up, so both my kids received the generic laptop from their school district to be able to use, mm -hmm. which is locked down so tight, you can't plug in a USB into it to get a printer to work. So I don't want them to use that. Instead, they're using Azure Active Directory to get into their environment. They've got Teams and stuff like that installed on a dedicated non-managed device that's uh, in the house, which is, which is what they're using right now. I've hooked them up with docking stations potentially or just external monitors and keyboards, so they're using a real um, interface. But on the Teams install, it's an educational version. Each of their classes is actually showing up as a team that they have to be part of. And the teachers can go and schedule meetings and blah, blah, blah uh, to be able to go off and do stuff. Well, one thing that's weird is they have something called assignments, and you can actually have an assignment given to the person that is like in a locked kind of format. Like they can't make changes to it, but they open up the assignment, and then maybe it's a Word doc, or maybe it's a PowerPoint slide, or whatever it is. It's auto-saving it inside the SharePoint backend or the, the OneDrive backend to do stuff. But there's, there's actually a button that my daughter had to press that's called check-in or turn-in. And it doesn't count until you hit the button that says turn in. And this one teacher 
the assignment that they gave was just text on the screen and then a link to an, an Office 365 form that they had to fill out. Um, and because it was an assignment, whatever the heck that means, the links didn't work. So she couldn't actually click on the link and do oh, anything. Okay. 30 people in her class are all freaking out in the chat trying to say it's not working. They can't turn stuff in. They don't know what it's doing. The poor teacher has no clue how to use Teams in this way. And she's like frustrated trying to talk to tech support. I get a text message saying, dad, can you come here? <laughs> <laughs> Walk down the thing. I'm looking at this. I'm trying to do this. And then I'm like, oh, well, why don't we just do this? Copy the link, paste in a browser outside of the world. The form opens up. She fills out the form, hits submit on the form, and that goes in. But then she hits the the uh, turn in option on, on Teams, and then all of a sudden this um, this uh, octopus arm flies out, grabs the team with a button, and then pulls it back in again. It's like some funky grade school for a high school student, some kind of funky grade school animation of turning in oh, the that's assignment. Cool. And then all of a sudden the teacher's like, "Oh, Grace Claus, you just you just actually submitted something." <laughs> <laughs> and then, then, so my daughter goes in and basically explains in the chat, uh, oh, here's what you have to do. So I'm doing tech support for uh, Mrs. Smith's uh, um, creative writing class right now. <laughs> Very good. Very ni nice. Nicely done. Nicely yeah. done. Um, there is a request in chat uh, to have you write a blog post on the pinning and such from Aspen. Ooh. So write a blog yeah. post on the pinning of Teams. Yeah. I guess I can do that. Maybe we can. Even, uh, I'll do that as complimentary to the live stream, but I'll get it done before we actually do the live stream because we keep on seeming to push that live stream uh, yes. further and further. But I'll get the blog post done. Yeah, our random yeah, acts yeah. of streaming. Sure, our, our random acts of streaming. Yeah, nice job. Nice job. Uh, hey, it's random spending time. Yep. Um, Probably because we're going to rat hole on this. <laughs> well, technically it's beer um, talk right now, but we'll skip beer talk because I think oh, I saw that. Do you want to do beer talk? Uh, we can do beer Ledwig talk. Spear, I mean, so we, we can't we can talk do beer about talk. beer talk. We, we can do beer talk. I mean, look. Um, Let, Ledwig, so, block your ears, buddy. I'm. I, I, I I'm terrified every time I go over to the to the one the one keg the the, the Manny's keg, um, <laughs> because I'm just terrified the next time I pull that handle it's gonna come it's gonna, up empty. it's gonna blow it's gonna blow foam yeah yeah so so I, I think what that means is we have to go in uh, you and I also have a friend that is next door that has an empty kegerator uh, we need yes. to go and do a beer reconnaissance mission with our zombie apocalypse yes. vehicles to uh, brave the COVID and get another keg of Manny's. Yep. And then yep. Uh, use the, um, the, my new way of finding out how to equally distribute that across three uh, home brewer kegs as well, which is go by weight. Instead of looking at the condensation on the side of the, ke of the keg to see how full it is, because it takes yeah. forever to do that, go by weight. You just simply put the keg empty on top of the scale and then you fill okay. it, and when it hits when it hits six hundred and sixty six ounces, that's when it's full. <laughs> oh, because ounces by volume are the same as weight, yeah. Something like that. I have no idea. Okay. But it's, it's, I found it funny that it's actually six 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 seems to be on my scale when the keg is full. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, there's really no uh, no comment on that. Actually, oh, is is required. Yeah. I, I do have to say though. Uh, when I went down, when I went to Georgetown, uh, the last time uh, I went by, so so they had they had the rare Manny's T-shirt available, Ooh. and it just popped up, and I'm like, okay, I've got to go pick it up, and I got a I got a gift card for my birthday, mm -hmm. so I, I I jumped down there, grabbed the Manny's T-shirt. I had a few extra a few extra dollars on on the gift card. Um, they had two new IPA that were actually related to each other. Ooh, they had the Save IPA. And they brother, have the Ferris sister, IPA. second cousin, twice removed. Well, I mean, it's Save and Ferris. I okay. mean, they've got to be related, right? Save Ferris, right? So, of course, I picked up the first one. Uh, the profile just looked a little bit better, and that's unbelievably good. And guess which one happens to be the most popular one? Number two. Yep, the Ferris beer, which I wasn't <laughs> able to said. get, which they don't have. But I can tell you the Save IPA is very, very nice. Very, nice. very, very nice. But, yeah, so... Yeah, we've done that. But I do love the naming. The, and when I saw that, I'm like, well, I'm going to have to get it. And what I really should have done is grab a growler of both while I was there. Yeah, and have um, a taste off and with a friend yeah. socially distanced in a driveway just yeah. down the street. You know, that would be nice. In a parking lot yeah. with the tailgate open or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I need to do that. I need to do that. Uh, okay, Ludwig, you can start listening now. We're going to stop talking about beer. We're going to random spending now. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so random spending. Um, have you done any random spending? Have you, it's it's the time. It's, it's the time it's of the year time. to So for those that for don't know that uh, do not work at Microsoft, uh, the month of September is typically when random spending takes place because that's when our cash and stock um, bonuses happen to appear inside of our bank accounts very soon. So people are preparing to random spend by stockpiling stuff inside of lists, inside of Amazonians, uh, to be able to get some online purchases. You should uh, see like my that. cart right now. Oh, I know, my I, cart just, is just waiting for the press the button to go kind of thing, right? So yeah. uh, <clears throat> for me, uh, on the advice of a good DJ friend of mine, uh, I oh. have actually just picked up a pair of in-ear monitors. Uh, yes. uh, is it I E M's? Is that what they're called? I E M's? Yes. Yeah, so yes. I'm getting a pair yes. of in-ear monitors. Uh, and, and I'm just going at the recommendation of a certain DJ friend of mine uh, with the uh, $40 version. Uh, so I actually I upped it to the $80 version to be able to get something done. And of course, for those who don't know, the in-ear monitors are not the toothbrush that uh, Joey has hanging out of his left ear right now. The, the, uh, <laughs> the in-ear monitors are the nice ones that you see that basically just fit inside the ear and then loop over top of the back of the ear and down the back of the shirt that you use for TV production or for videos or for uh, DJing, apparently. So they're, they're rather discreet. And the reason why he recommended them and I also recommended them too is because we're going to be hosting Microsoft Ignite online. Have you registered yet? Go to my Microsoft Ignite or my Ignite at Microsoft.com and go register today. There's the next pitch. We have to get that in 25 times, you realize, before the end of the show, according <laughs> to our contract. Um, so we're hosting different days and different sections of that. So I'll be hosting uh, day two afternoon and evening shift uh, because it goes for 48 hours. And then you and I, I guess we can make the Groundbreaking news announcement, worldwide announcement that we will be hosting day two of Ignite as Patch and Switch. We will. We will. Um, Patch and Switch. Um, I don't know how we swung this one. Uh, it's, uh, they obviously did not look at this podcast before. That's for sure. <laughs> I thought we were for sure going to be relegated at least to the overnight shift, which would yeah. have been OK, um, <laughs> just because, you know, the, the, of course, I think that they would be worried that we would actually do something at that at that point. So they they're like the best way to supervise you two is to put you in prime time. Yes, basically. Yes. So we can no longer Crap, use our tagline you created, which was it's not our fault because we were left unsupervised. That's right. It's not our fault. We were left unsupervised. Um, yeah, so we're going to, so I have my IEMs here now. The reason that I do not have them currently plugged in and I'm using the wireless um, uh, toothbrush in my ear, as you called it, uh, is I needed an extension cable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I could reach it around, but like then I'd have wires going across. Yeah, so, and the other thing too is it's kind of nice not to have a dangly cord. But yeah. when you're doing real TV production, there's a wireless pack that you'll that, that we'll have and you know you can get it all done up and and be all yeah, yeah. We're, so I'm, we are, I'm we are not opting for the elon musk version where they actually implant something inside of your brain neurons apparently we're not right. going for that one no uh wire connect saying he's getting custom mold and pits to, to fit his weird shaped ears now we had a long conversation about <laughs> In ear monitors because no, no, let's let's let, let's actually let's let's fest this up. We actually had a rat hole conversation yes. forever, going down deeps into the depths of in ear yes. monitors with molded tips. So I have a second set of in ear monitors, which I use for DJing. And you were like, "Well, why do you use a second set for for DJing?" And it's because you'll notice that this has a rather gold kind of piece that sticks out. It's not necessarily discreet. So it doesn't necessarily look becomes, fantastic for television. It becomes production. bougie jewelry for DJ Joey Snow. That's right. Well, the other thing, though, is that um, it's designed to also block out noise. So it does a 10 to 15 is, decibel based on the tip. Is, uh, reduction is it loud when you out, DJ? I thought noise. the speakers face the audience, not you. Is, yeah, is, other than there's two the speakers that sit right next to me that... <laughs> I have control of the volume knob. And if you've ever been to a gig and come anywhere close to me, that knob just keeps going up and up and up and up as the night goes on and I yes. just get deaf. 
Um, so I've gone, I've started to, so this is the first, uh, the last couple of weeks of doing the show um, over on Spreaker for Bash Music. I've actually done my mixes in my in-ear monitors versus over-the-ear headphones. Um, and it's kind of nice because a lot more flexibility. I can run this this cord down down the back and, and connect it in. But so is, uh, Izzy we in the chat about, room wants to know, can you dance with in-ear monitors? Well, as long as you've got a long ear, a longer cord, yeah, absolutely, yeah. you can, absolutely. Yeah. But um, we were talking about getting custom ones done. Now, right. the, the main reason I got the relatively not as expensive, less than a thousand dollar in ear monitors, and not the custom ones, is I'm cheap, um, <laughs> and I've been waiting for September to come around. That being said, now I am really looking forward to. Oh, hey, I just discovered <laughs> these headphones actually. I can actually take off my little uh, twisty tie piece yes. because the, the idiot monitors actually have the... <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, he, was, he, he was using a twist tie from a garbage bag to basically shorten yes. up the loop. <laughs> so that it can, can tighten up at the back, oh. but you don't need that. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so we are, we have been, I have been researching and we did quite a bit of discussion about the right in-ear monitors to get custom. And yeah. that is something that I'm looking to do. It's just, it's very expensive. And the other thing is it, it requires a visit to an audiologist Yeah. And, uh, to take the molds of the ear. And my biggest concern with visiting an audiologist is they'll be like, yeah, it's time for you to get hearing aids. Nice, nice. Well, some of them have, we also discussed that some of them actually have uh, in-home fit kits if you wanted to. However, I don't think I would trust actually taking a syringe and throwing liquid epoxy down my ear would be good. <laughs> uh, I'd probably forget to put the string in and then I would be stuck with this thing in my ear that I can't get out. <laughs> Joey, Joey, can you speak up? I can't hear you. <laughs> He, he, he would he would end up back at the audiologist going, so they said I could do this at home. And they're like, yeah, do you see this cotton in this airplug you were supposed to put in the canal before you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah not a good idea. Yeah, it would be live streamed. <laughs> Wire Canuck said he had the deep molds done this morning, so that's super cool. So he's getting yeah. custom ones. I have custom earplugs, musicians' earplugs, but yeah, I'm going I've to have some, those converted. Uh, I, have, to, I have some custom ones I use for uh, motorcycles. Yeah. So I'm going to have those, uh, I'm going to convert and use so, some. So my uh, luck is I would probably end up putting epoxy in my ear as opposed to the latex. <laughs> as opposed to... Oh crap, wrong syringe. I got this yeah. mixed up in the brewery. Damn it. Uh, uh, <laughs> any, any other, any random spending from the group? Because I'm going to go off on a, on a, on a tangent here. Uh, Another one. Uh, so I know, yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm just wanted to ask if anybody in the, in the, in the chat has some random spending that they're doing. Um, Wire Canuck is posting where he's he's getting some of his custom stuff oh, nice. done. Um, I I go through an audiologist. I use Westone. That's, so that. I think SharePoint Matt I mentioned there. You know, laptops for flight sim, and I've been seeing a lot of stuff online about just how demanding graphics processing is for flight simulator. Um, yep. And in fact, I think that um, Nvidia released a brand new series of uh, graphics cards, the thirty thirty eighties, I think they are, which basically come with a radiator the size of what you would put in your car to be able to <laughs> cool the thing down, uh, just to be able to support it as an option. Uh, and I, I will also concur from random spending that's not happening in the uh, patch and switch household over here, is I am absolutely not buying new laptops, new desktops, new desktop parts, new stuff right now, because everything's so freaking expensive right now. All the yeah, prices are jacked up because of lack of supply and everybody buying them for going back to school and stuff like that. So I had these grandiose plans of doing a custom PC build and again, doing a live stream with you and PC yep. parts picker and having some fun. But um, there's no way I'm buying stuff right now. I'm holding off. Uh, Colleen says, random spending vet bill to have my cat sedated and shaved. I don't want to pay for the hospital bills to any groomer that had to work on her. Uh, <laughs> C Sharp Fritz likes his over the ear over the ear audio Technica headphones, and yes, I agree. Very nice. Uh, I was looking to get, um, yeah, the, the the over the ear stuff I've been using forever and ever, and it's kind of like you don't look like a DJ unless you have a pair of headphones there. But I'm the the problem is is that I need to to try to save my hearing, and so um, by being able mm -hmm. to use, uh, essentially, they do noise cancellation but allow all frequencies through with the tips and and in ear monitors that. 
kind of does some work there. But that's that's me. DEF CON veteran waiting for the Xbox Series X. I think a lot of us are doing that as well. Oh, yeah. Azure yeah. MCT. Oh, hello, Azure MCT. A uh, new camera and lens for streaming. What are you thinking? Uh, particularly yeah, which way are you going to go? Wise. Yeah, yeah, we want to we want to know what you, what you've got going there. Um, I know I, I know that our for, no go ahead. I'm just, just calling out uh, our good friend Mr. Steve, the audio guy, has uh, made a random spend purchase of a new camera. Um, I don't know if he's wearing a shirt right now, if he can turn his camera on or not, but. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, okay. Panasonic Lumix G100, the new one, nice and light. You brought that out to a, ran a socially distanced a beverage of a malt type, uh, of barley and malt uh, type uh, a while ago. It looked quite nice to be able to go off and use. Looks like Azure MCT going with this new, the brand new Sony A6600. Mm -hmm. I have the 6500. Nice. Which lens were you going to pop on that bad boy? I, I'm just curious. Uh, TDI Bone, I used to support Flight Sim. Those uh, Flight Sim users are a whole new type of hardware geek. Now, I was going to suggest... Uh, SharePoint, madam, the best thing for a laptop to run flight sim is to go out and pick up one of those new uh, NVIDIA graphics cards and then build everything around it and put it in its custom case. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the only way you're going to get the power to run that thing. <laughs> uh, Wirekinect says, Sony A6000 uh, 6, with Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4. I'm actually looking to buy that lens. Um, it's in my it's in my cart. Yeah. Uh, Azure MCT an eighteen millimeter Sigma. Okay, yeah. nice, nice. What, um, I was just gonna go say what, uh, which one is is uh, although we can't show us right now. Um, Steve guy, audio guy. What what lens are you using for yours? Did we lose them? Twelve to thirty two. And what's the aperture on that? 3.5. So in, in case you're wondering, folks, from a um, photography perspective, for what little I do know, because I was the president of the photo club in high school. Did you know that? Um, <laughs> I actually shocker. didn't know that. How did I not know that? <laughs> <laughs> um, the only reason why I was the president of the photo club in high school was because the photo lab was one of the only doors uh, that actually had a key that the teachers did not have access to. Only I did. And the janitor that ran during the day. So it was a great place <clears throat> for extraneous beverages uh, during certain social activities. But anyway, beside that, um, yeah, the aperture, the smaller the number, the the narrower, the the, um, the sharper and the narrower the focus depth is, which gives you that lovely, uh, what, what's the technical term for that? The the, the blur effect behind you, the, what's the, that it, called? It's called bokeh. Bokeh. Is it bokeh? Okay. Nice. So yeah, the smaller the better. B-O-K-E-H, I believe is how it's spelled. Nice. Uh, Shady Sapanda has wanted to buy a flight yoke for flight sim. They're sold out everywhere. Oh, uh, no, that's that, another another example of hardware that's been jacked up in price because uh, people are looking for it, all the flight nerds. Yeah, Aspen Forster using a Canon M50 with the stock 1545 lens. I'm using nice. the, the Sony A6500 using its stock 18 to 36, um, and it runs two something to four something in the in the in the aperture. Yeah, I'm 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 using uh, my uh, <clears throat> borrowed <laughs> official video camera from Channel Nine Studios that they haven't realized that I've borrowed yet because they're not in the chat room right now. Okay, good, they're not. Um, it's the Canon <laughs> Canon XC15, which uh, is a single non-removable lens on it that allows me to basically do uh, I want to say 18 to 200 or something like that, some crazy lens. But it doesn't have as nice small, uh, sorry, a nice large aperture, which is represented by a small number. I'm only at 2.8 at this point. Uh, C Sharp Fritz uses a background effect called green screen. <laughs> Actually, uh, C Sharp Fritz, uh, I, I can't use a green screen because otherwise my head disappears with my hat. <laughs> So uh, I can't get the key just right. So I've actually gone the route of a blue screen uh, behind me, but it's over there on the other half of my studio. You know, last last week I was I was watching um, our friend Fritz uh, C Sharp Fritz uh, play play uh, some Fall Guys. Oh yeah, uh, he was going for his first crown on his birthday. But I tell you what, the guy the guy has got his stream like 
set up like dialed he's just in, got that man. perfect yeah completely dialed in well, we're I, gonna have him on we, we need to have him on our random access streaming show where we can talk about some of this stuff i think so um yeah because it's his setup is just it, it's just ideal i've we i've moved amateurs compared to what he's got going on over there yeah we are i've moved to i've, I've actually just picked up a lab mic i've <clears throat> borrowed <laughs> a lab mic <laughs> don't don't she check studio access C. to the closet yes. she gave me access to the closet That's so true. it is with full That's permission true. Um, and it's been taking some getting used to. I still do like to use my my normal mic that's on the stand over here at, at certain times. Oh, um, you know what? You know what I use my mic stand for now. What, what's on the mic stand? Uh, normally, I take my hat off and I put it on the mic. Oh, stand. Oh, there you go. Way. Okay, that's my mic stand. Awesome. Now. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about. Uh, we're going to wrap. We have four minutes. I I have no time for this, but okay. maybe chat can help me monitors mm -hmm. so i have to get new monitors for for don't, for don't the, buy it right now homebound students don't buy them right now same problem well monitors are not up. too bad i'm telling you prices on monitors are actually not too bad i've researched oh, yeah? but i have a question I, I i so 4k is it worth it considering i'm probably never going to be able to at least for the next couple of years afford a 4k gaming rig mm -hmm. to be clear number two refresh rate so 98% of what I do is business oriented or I'm doing music stuff or something like that. Do I have to go above 65, 60, 65? Do I need 144 refresh, refresh rate? Uh, I'm looking somewhere between 27 and 32 inches um, to do, like I said, mostly productivity, some gaming, but my gaming on the PC would be limited to things like Diablo, Starcraft, kind of that Fall type guys. of a game, uh, Fall Guys. Um, I have a console, which I do my failed attempt at first person shooter. So, so I want to know but, but as, as, as the, as the chat room chats in, cause they're catching up to where we are right now. I will interject with my suggestion. I've gone the business route with a Samsung monitor that, uh, is not gaming, which is the fast refresh rate or the fast redraw speeds in milliseconds, whatever it is. I went with 4k. Uh, for okay. business purposes, and I went with the 28 or actually a 30 or 32 inch monitor. It's just a regular square. It's not the ginormous yeah. huge one. Right. I did it mainly because I'm cheap, uh, but it works perfectly fine for being able to have the screen real estate that you need for doing work stuff. And I happen to have my second input be my Xbox S, and it simply scales down and scales up. Sorry to uh, to the full size screen when I'm playing my 1080p uh, games <clears throat> games during working time and having meetings with my friends. Um, and it works just fine inside my office to be able to have my own Xbox up on that particular thing because they're not gaming. And, and you know, I'm, I don't know about your eyes, but they're probably not as fresh as mine are or as our guests are. So uh, do you really need to have the super fast refresh rate even if you are doing some light gaming on that monitor? So, so our friend Wired Canuck, uh, says 144 megahertz refresh minimum. I don't know if I agree with that because again, that's for gaming, I, that's for gaming right? That's not going to help me in this. And the 4K thing is still a big question mark for me whether I, I need it's, to go with the price 4K point or not. It's price point. I mean, obviously, a 30 a 30 inch monitor. Once you get a, once you get above 28 inches, uh, and you're using 1080p, you might as well go for the 4K to get the extra pixels. That's my opinion. Completely well, unofficial and and non technical. But but you could go up to having the the fourteen forty resolution, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Thoughts? Me, I mean, for, for me, for me, it's price point. Spend spend and save your dollars for the Xbox X console. Um, when you go four K, uh, go for the gaming style monitor if that's where it's going to be. Uh, but, um, I'm just going 4k business use to get uh, the dollar value. And you know what? My, my kids, I, I give, I gave them my old, uh, 28 inch monitors that were 1080p and they're, they're ecstatic over the moon because they've got this massive monitor, massive monitor, uh, of 28 inches to look at as opposed to the surface screen or the laptop screen. So they're over the moon with that. I didn't want to blow their minds with a 4k monitor. <laughs> <laughs> you can't yeah. give them the good stuff just yet because then you have to keep on going no, up. No, they, right? they have so. to get the hand me down. So I'm looking at yeah. chat. Uh, the shadiest of pen is I got a 32 inch curved 1440p WQHD resolution. So it does 2560 by 1440. Yeah. Love the extra space on the main monitor. So 
that's something I've been looking at, very something similar there um, for this. And the Samsung panel, whether it be through Acer or Asus or one of the other companies, seems to be kind of the 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 the, the go-to there. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Buckeye Guy JFlow, the LG 5K 2K monitor, only 60 hertz for pr pr productivity. It's awesome. Um, I have asked um, just, hey, J-Shock, just so you're aware, um, we'll do producer stuff here. We're going to go a couple minutes over. Uh, we've got three work safe words, which I'll get to, but J-Shock, um, there seems to be a couple of people that Fritzy is recommending that we're going to raid, because we're going to start doing this raid thing now oh, after yeah. we're finished. Uh, so uh, our CA fr California friend Brian Clark is streaming at Clarkio. It looks like we've got, uh, let's see, who else? InstaFluff or James Montemagno. So J-Shock, you, being you're the producer, you pick one of those uh, folks that we could raid. Uh, maybe Brian Clark uh, we could raid there. Yeah, um, In, InstaFlop has already got a whole bunch of people on the stream, I'm sure. He's good stuff. All right, sounds good. Yeah, so uh, C-Sharp Fritz, I want to get an ultra-wide monitor or two, 21 by 9. See, yeah. that was the other thing, but I don't think I want ultra-wide because for music production, that's probably not going to be ideal. Um, I need to be able but, to get but in. But you just and, treat it as, as three separate monitors, and you basically have hot zones to be able to go yeah. in from... Uh, three separate spaces you just go and drag your apps to and you don't have the stupid yeah. bezel in the middle of multi monitor that's where I, that's where i would go if i got you know <laughs> 1200 bucks to drop on a new monitor or something yeah like that. and that's the thing i'm looking i'm looking at the 350 ish range that we're going to do um, got it that, that's what I'm looking at. So listen, if you have more recommendations, of course, you can catch us um, on all the social medias at Patch and Switch. Um, we're going to wrap up the show here shortly, so don't go with the band yet, but I do want to do our three work safe words. Uh, we're going to do uh, uh, bokeh echo in ear. Nice. Bokeh echo in ear will be the, uh, the, the uh, title of the program for uh, the show happening in a fortnight's time. Um, once again, if you have not seen it, the unofficial, uh, the Patch and Switch Consultancy unofficial end user guide to Microsoft Ignite is available at aka.ms slash patch and switch. Tell all of your friends, get yeah. registered. Uh, and so we'll kick in the band now, even though we're two minutes late, it's okay. We can go over. It's our show. We're on Twitch. Yeah. Uh, so it's our show. Uh, so with the band kicking in, uh, that means that we've come to the end of another exciting episode. Stay, stick around. We're raiding soon. Uh, yeah. of the Patch and Switch program. Thank you to Absoblog and Lutely, Aspen Forrester, A10, Colleen, Commander Root, C Sharp Fritz, great to see you, sir, uh, D uh, Dark Legacy, Defcon Veteran, Exchange SME, Val Temper of the PDXs, uh, K McFerrin, Kodiak, Kowski, KT Baker, Lurks, uh, Rimestino, Ledwig in the house, the shadiest of pandas, the madam of share points, Sigo, good to see you, Sigo360, welcome to the program. Uh, Soren, TADI Bone, thanks for your participation. VNK, the non official official gen of the Touch and Switch program, Virgo Pros, Vizio MVP, Wired Canuck, everybody else, Izzy, everybody, thanks for tuning in. We are raiding, we are now going to raid. So everybody's press a button for that or something? How do we raid? No, the, the mod. <laughs>